So why are they an issue in houses? Well, fungal attack of timber. Uh, you get either wet rot or dry rot. Um, so uh, what that happens is in either case is the fungi are uh, digesting the timber itself and when you consider just how inedible timber is uh, this is really quite impressive uh, they're one of the few organisms that can digest lignin which makes up wood uh, because it's such a large and complex uh, uh, molecule and so uh, wet rots are uh, there's lots and lots of these and they are what you classically get um, when you get old window sills that rot or floorboards that rot around showers uh, or bits of wood that rot in the woods um, and so these wet rots they stay wet all the time and so if they dry out then the growth of the rot stops now dry rots a little different this is sort of um, this is uh, yeah. Uh, what happens uh, when you get uh, a fungus which can take uh, a, it germinates with a little bit of moisture, uh, but then it's able to move that moisture along its hyphae uh, just the same way as a plant moves moisture from its roots to its branches. And so it's able to move that to other places in the building where it's able to then start digesting the timber. So you can get that rot occurring uh, in other places in the building where the timber is completely dry and there's no reason that it should be rotting. And so that's why it's such a risk. So a few pictures here of wet rot, um, but first a few notes on it. So uh, wet rot and dry rot can be easily confused. Um, but the main hazard caused by the rot is that it reduces the structural integrity of the timber. Uh, and so this either means that uh, they need replacing or if they're in a structural component of the building, it might need the, they need re -strength, uh, they might need strengthening. And usually they'll need treating with something to stop any further growth of the fungus. Uh, and they definitely need drying out um, in order to try to uh, prevent any future rot occurring in that location. So these are examples of windowsills that are uh, suffering from wet rot. Uh, and typically uh, the paint starts to go and then the water gets in. And it's wet, dry, wet, dry, wet, dry. And every time it gets wet, the uh, fungus uh, reproduces a little more. So it produces a little more growth and digests a bit more of the timber. Uh, you see here next to a floor on the right hand side where it looks like the um, moisture is soaked up through uh, a panel of timber in the wall. Uh, these, it's the windowsill. It gets to the point where it gets so soft that when it's damp, you can stick your pen. Uh, if you've got a biro pen, you can stick the biro pen right through the wooden windowsill. Uh, and pull, comes off in big handfuls. It looks a lot like a sort of rotting tree stump in the jungle, in a, in a wood. Now the rot that gets everybody worried is circular lacrimans. A lovely name for a, a pretty, um, pretty bad fungus. Uh, so it's, it's usual effect on wood, um, is if you're trying to spot it, it's, it's, um, if you notice a wet rot, it goes all squishy and spongy. Serpial lacrimans have some quite characteristic decomposition patterns for wood. What it does is, uh, wood crumbles. It becomes very light, very lightweight. Uh, and it uh, very often remains dry whilst it's been rotted by circular lacrimans. Um, and it goes a kind of dull brown colour. Um, often you get a kind of reddish dust associated with it too. And interestingly, it always splits into roughly cubic pieces, which is really quite odd for it to do that. If you do see any of the fungus itself, which usually lives on the surface of the wood, it might form a kind of sheets of strands of grey or white filaments, uh, two to eight millimetre thick. And the mycelium, the uh, uh, which grows where you get a mass of it, it forms these soft white cushions or silky growths uh, in damp, dark places, um, and silver grey sheets in drier places. Um, skin's usually got lime, uh, it might have patches of lemon yellow or lilac, which makes it sound like really rather pretty. Um, sadly, I've uh, not got a great deal of pictures to show you of this, so I've got a few library shots to show you. So the fruit bodies and the spores um, are quite tough and uh, fleshy, they're often uh, flat, like a pancake shape. 
When it says brackets, it's basically like a, a sort of stiffened pancake stif- sticking out from uh, the wood, the sort of thing that you see with a lot of wet rots on trees. And the spore bearing surface goes rusty red as all of those spores are a kind of rusty red colour. Um, so you've got to look for the dust. Now here's an example of one of the uh, fruiting bodies. And that's, uh, now the, this circular lacrimans is in the air all around us all the time. Uh, and so all buildings have got the spores in them. Uh, but it's a matter of whether you've got an area that's wet long enough for the spores to take root, uh, uh, to, to germinate, should I say. There's a couple of other pictures. See some fruiting bodies, whereas the majority of the I fear underneath the wood. Uh, that hasn't rotted too badly. Uh, this one's starting to go on the right here. You can see the red dust forming uh, and it's underneath this paint. It'll be starting to form that cuboidal cracking. Some pretty grainy but fairly uh, much better shots here. Now, the reason this is so amazing is this stuff um, can grow through walls and it can actually digest walls to get nutrients out of them. Um, but mostly it eats its way through wood that it finds within the structure. And so you can see here these sort of silvery uh, sheets that uh, it's growing across the brickwork. This is pretty serious uh, manifestation of the dry rot. Uh, in a cellar, which is commonly where they start because you've got enough uh, exposed wood uh, as food and uh, enough moisture to keep it, uh, to get it going. But once it's uh, germinated here, bear in mind it can grow into dry bits of the structure and then start eating away at them. So you can see here that sort of characteristic cuboidal cracking uh, of uh, the timber. So how do we treat it? Well, what you need to do is you treat it a bit like a cancer. and It's called the uh, kind of cancer of buildings uh, when the people refer to it. And so you have to cut away all infected timber for about half a meter beyond any infected part to make sure you've got all of the uh, hyphae out of it. And then uh, try to um, bag it up uh, in order to move it about the property, avoid spreading those spores uh, about the property. To uh, And then hopefully you'll be able to burn it uh, in the property by uh, chucking it out of its bags into uh, a fire where it can be um, uh, sterilized and de- uh, killed. Surrounding masonry should be sterilized with a fungicide and just Spread, uh, you should spray that fungicide over any of the remaining timber work around the affected area. And then uh, once you've done that, uh, you should replace the uh, missing timber and strengthen where necessary. The other thing you need to do is start trying to look for the cause of that outbreak. So there's going to be somewhere where it started. So I've seen a couple of outbreaks occur. One in occur in a cellar. Uh, another one occurred in uh, a bathroom underneath the bath where the shower, or the bath hadn't been sealed properly around the, uh, where the silicon goes around the edge of the bath. And so the water was getting in there and it caused the dry rot to start underneath the bath and then it started spreading out from there. Uh, so, uh, other um, things to consider uh, when you're looking for these things, uh, a classic is looking at skirting boards and you'll see a kind of waviness because it doesn't break its way through the uh, paintwork and the paint's usually slightly flexible. Um, other things is looking for odd patterning in the window linings or timber work underneath the paint. Uh, the tacked wood, you'll be able to prod your fingers. It'll be uh, crumbly, uh, often dry, usually quite hard. Uh, little granules it turns itself into. Um, but again, really quite amazing stuff uh, when it gets going. Uh, but much, uh, much rarer, thankfully, now than, uh, than you see for wet rots.